more than being that he's, you know, the African American character, he's the one character in the film that had a nurturing mother. And he's actually the one person, therefore, that can mother. And my feeling about all of these characters is that they're all motherless and that we live in a society that tends to wound our daughters and then when our daughters grow up they can't mother their daughters and so then their daughters can't mother their daughters and that there's this cycle of motherlessness and I feel like there's a great longing in this story uh, all the characters are longing for mother except Charles and you hear about his mother and the warmth and the nurturing and because of that I think he's able to then you know nurture as well. So that was for me. It was less about that. You know. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I don't know that I I drew inspiration from Southern authors. Again, I'm from the South, and um, it's just the way sort of stories live in me. I I you know people have mentioned Southern authors, and I'm very you know flattered when when I'm put in the same category as those. Um, again, it was just a deep listening to myself and um, came out that way. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. What's the uh, history of uh, the Cola family? Has she been active a lot? And oh, yeah. She, st she, was, she started acting when she was six. She's done 13 films before this film, so she's extraordinary. The incredibly gifted young woman. Gifted not just as an actress, but I think, you know, as a human being, she's quite ex astonishing how um, how great her understanding of life is at such a young age. Yes? Yeah. Um, on the class spectrum, I see him uh, a step up from Dakota's family. Yeah, sort of lower middle area. No, no. Yes? Yeah. Well, I don't see it as controversial either, and I got some snide remark about, oh, how can you be so naive? Well, when we were shooting it, we were shooting this film. We were shooting this script, and none of us thought of it as controversial. There was, you know, some, some sensationalized information leaked to the press the last day we were shooting, and um, that just started this very intense response. And for me, it's just very interesting. In a way, it was really difficult. It was especially difficult to Dakota and her family. Um, I think I was able to weather it just because, you know, it's been 10 years doing this film and so many people have said no and at a certain point you just say, okay, well, whatever, I'm just going to keep doing it, but um, I had a point here, I was going somewhere with this, and it's gone, I'll come back to it. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, it'll come back to me, yeah. Oh, um, that, thank you, that reminds me of my last question, which is, <laughs> no, I just think that, there, that there's this terror in our society, this issue is an epidemic in our society that people just don't want to look at, they don't want to talk about, there's so much fear, it's like, it's like when you have this secret and you feel like if you tell this secret you're going to die, and I feel like there's this societal feeling like we're going to die if we actually look at this. And I think all of the silencing that, that's coming around this film is from people who are wounded. I think they're so, we are so deeply wounded as a culture and society. And I think that when you actually talk about it, when you open it up, there's actually space for healing to begin. And I, it was important to me to show this scene because you know what? Yeah, we know about it, but we don't want to look at it. And I feel like, you know what? You got to look at it. You got to look at it. Now, I feel like... I don't feel
feel like it's graphic, but you know, everyone has their own opinion about it. I I felt like if I filmed this in a way that was titillating in any way, that I was betraying why I was doing it. So I was very careful about how I put images together to create the you know horrific event that's happening, but also to not um, you know be provocative in a titillating way. Yes. Um, just as a director, how do you approach a scene like that with an underage actor? I mean, is that a script to her, or is that her parents, or her parents? Are you just from the standpoint of dealing with it in a, in a way that is sensitive to the actor, the color is underage, but that her parents, I guess, are the color of the How would you just deal with it so that... Sure. Um, he wants to know how I dealt with, you know, that she's 12, how did the script get to her, how did I talk to her about this scene. Um, well, I sent the script to her agent. I actually didn't expect to hear anything back, and two months later I got a call saying, you know, Dakota wants to do it, can you come out tomorrow? And I flew out. Um, she had said that when she read the script, that was it, she had to do it, she loved it. And she actually stayed available for nine months as our finance, financing kept falling through, and we put it together and fall through, put it together. And she turned down a lot of work to stay available. Um, she says that when she read it, she just she just had to do it. <clears throat> when I met with her, it was astonishing. I felt I, uh, the moment I met with her, I knew that she had an understanding of this story that was beyond explanation. It was beyond her years, and it has to do, I think, with her talent that I was talking about earlier. This. She is, it's a cliche, but she's an old soul. And it was like her old soul knew this character's soul. And this character comes from a deep place in my soul. So that just connected us immediately to each other. And we spent nine months working around the script. We didn't work at it directly. You know, I thought with all the kids, I didn't need to explain the, psycholo the psychology and what was psychologically happening in the characters to them, I just had to put images together. And with Dakota, I could tell she knew. So it wasn't like we were probing. There was some disgusting report that I was next to her saying, now he's ripping your panties off and now he's sticking in. I was like, please, no. <laughs> I was actually sitting right next to her saying, okay, okay, hold your breath. Don't make another breath. Now exhale. You know, it was very technical, actually, when we got to that and it was also, we never ran through the scene from beginning to end. You know, people have this idea that she had to act out a rape scene. She was attacked over and over. We shot it in increments, you know. You shoot the hand hitting the ground. You shoot the foot tripping. You shoot a child saying, stop it, stop it. You shoot a zipper unzipping. You put those images together and you have a rape. But we didn't ever run through the rape scene from beginning to end. And we created over the nine months this really deep trust. Um, as I was saying, we work, talked every day, and it was around the script. It was about the character and the world. And when we got there to set, it was like we took each other by the hand and walked into this world together. And uh, I was with her the whole time, and we walked out of it together. And, you know, she's extraordinary. After the scene, you know, we were actually standing uh, by the creek looking at the alligator in the creek that, that she was going to have to swim in the next day. Oh. And, <laughs> We called it, the, the alligator wrangler came out and wrestled it and took it off. But, um, you know, she was like laughing and dancing because she knew, she knew she'd done this extraordinary performance. That's what it was about for her. And it was, um, it was just really a, an incredible gift working with her. Thank you.